pin a comment here. Hold on one second. Yo, what's up, man? Hold on one second. What's going on? Need to put this up. How y'all doing, man? Y'all come on in. Put a link up here real quick. All right, there it is. Boom. Now how do I pin this bitch? Pin it. There it is. All right. All right. What's up, y'all? I'm here. What's up, man? Y'all come on in. How y'all living? How's the family doing? What's up? I ain't been on here live in a minute. What's going on? Happy. Holidays for those who celebrate Halloween or who's doing their thing for Halloween with the kids. How's everybody living? I'm good, man. I ain't been on live here in a minute. It's been a minute since I've been live. What's up, um, Cal Barbie? What's up, B-Boy Morris? What's up, Marie? Conscious Widow. How y'all living, man? I'm just checking in with y'all. I have not been on here to talk to the... Um, IG fam in a minute. Want to see what's on your mind? Get some callers calling in in a second. And um, just see what's going on with you. A lot of stuff happening out here in these streets. What's up, the plug's wife? Um, right now, you know, we're still doing the crowdfunding for the movie Microphone Check. We got three days left, family. We only got three days left, and we're almost at the goal. It's very important that we reach the goal because it's an all or nothing thing. It's an all or nothing project, so we got to get all the funding or none at all. And we're uh, we're trying to get to 180, 180K. We're at 135 right now. So we got three days to get to the, the uh, finish line so everybody can hit that link here while we're chopping it up. And I'm going to get, um, you can't click the pin? Well, y'all can't click. So guys, when you try to hit this link, what happens when you try to hit the link, family? When y'all try to hit that link, what, what goes on? Let me know if y'all can hit that link. All right. What happens when you hit that link? There's no link. You can't click it. Oh, let me do this. Let me do this. Um, let me see. Let me try this. Try that. Uh, let me just put the, the website microphonecheck.com. And, um, oh, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? Nothing happens. Okay, hold on. Let me just put microphone check. Uh, yeah. uh, my, uh, Y'all bear with me. I just tried that way. And people can just go to microphonecheck.com and that'll take you to the Kickstarter link. Okay, god damn, here what I'm having. What the hell is this thing trying to do, man? Hold on. All right. Let's see what it does here. Did it work? Shit. All right. Okay, let me just try that. Let me try pinning that. All right, I just pinned the microphonecheck.com. All right, so you just go to microphonecheck.com. All right, what's up, Simply Michaela? I see you, sis. I see y'all. So what's going on, man? A lot of stuff we got to talk about, man. You know, I saw something where um, they're talking about the service in Atlanta. This one TikTok dude, he went down to Atlanta and he went to some of the food spots and um, he went to Candy's restaurant, Old Lady Gang, and, you know, kind of complaining about the service. And the whole narrative was that a lot of um, businesses like restaurants in Atlanta, the narrative is that they have bad customer service. So that's kind of a narrative. And I think some of the narrative was like the Old Lady Gang, um, the customer service <laughs> was bad or something, something to that effect. So I see a lot of people are chiming in on it, talking about, customer service in Atlanta, yeah? 
Yes, every while I'm talking, everybody definitely go to the documentary website. Um, while which because we got to get to this goal. This is a very important documentary. So while I'm talking, everybody can go to microphonecheck.com. But talking about um, um, the guy, what's his name? The guy's name is Keith Lee. You say, no, the food in Atlanta is good. No, I'm, the food now. I don't. I see people complaining about the food there now. And I haven't lived in Atlanta in a long time. I lived there for a quick minute back in the 90s. Um, and I go back all the time. But um, you say Candy's Blaze restaurant. I didn't know she had another restaurant. I didn't. You say Blaze. The food isn't good at Blaze. I never. I didn't even know about Blaze. Now I've been to Old Lady Gang. Okay, I've been there. Um, you know, it's it's packed. So, you know, when a place is very packed, you know, the, uh, you know, times are going to be a little slow to get in and all that stuff. But the people were cool. They were very hospitable when we were there. You know, I met. Um, one of the, the aunties, very sweet lady. So they were very nice and I enjoyed the food. It was just very packed and, you know, that's a good problem. You know, I like to see, you know, businesses where black people are running them and it's so packed, you know, you just got people waiting in line. And that's, you know, that's the cost of doing good business. Um, are there some crappy places? <laughs> yeah, you got some crappy customer service at some of these spots. I remember when I used to go to, um, Sylvia Soul Food, not complained about them long ago. And they've gotten better. They've gotten better. I remember years ago, I, I went to New York and I went to Sylvia Soul Food. And the customer service to us, you know, it was, it was horrible at the time. And what I really didn't like about it was that, you know, the, the customer service was bad for us. But when some white folks came in, the niggas was tap dancing, you know? When the, the, some white people came in, boy, it, it turned into a plantation celebration. Boy, they were like, ooh, come, ooh, come right this way, sir. But they had us standing up waiting. And though when the white people came in, ooh, come on, come on, I'll get some hot biscuits right on the table for you. You know, it was that type of thing. I'm like, oh, so that threw me off. But it's gotten better at Sylvia Soul Food. Last time I went, I was, when I was in New York filming for the movie Microphone Check, I went there a few times and they were absolutely phenomenal at Sylvia Soul Food. Um, Sylvia's was good. Melba's was good. Um, uh, what's that other one? And um, Ruth Ann's. What's the name of? Where, where are my New York people? <clears throat> Sylvia's food is good. No, no, we're not gonna crap on Sylvia. What's the uh, Anna Ruth? What's the other name? What's the name? My New York people. What's the name of that soul food place in in New York? Anna something. Ruth something. Um, Amy Ruth's. Yes, I love Amy Ruth's. Yes, Amy Ruth. I love that spot. That was one of my favorite spots. Absolutely loved it. What's up, Chelsea? Yes, Amy Ruth. Very good spot in New York. Now, in Atlanta, what are the new spots there now? Because again, I, I'm, I can't, to be honest, I'm going to be fair, I can't really speak on Atlanta like that because I'm not down there like that. You understand? Yeah, Dallas Barbecue is very good too in New York. So in, in Atlanta, what are the hot spots, the good food spots now? Do they have, um, what was that? In Atlanta, they had a real good Jamaican spot, a Caribbean spot. My good brother, Carl the Promoter, took me there. My Nigerian brother, he took me there. Uh, what was that? What's that Caribbean spot in Atlanta? People are complaining about Atlanta food. People are saying Atlanta food is trash now. I know. I, ah. I love Waffle House. That's my spot. The Waffle House is my spot. Is it Negril's? Right, right. Negril Village. Very good food. I like Negril Village. Negril Village is good. Um, what's that other? There's another soul food spot. This sister makes phenomenal chicken. It's off in the hood um, in Atlanta. Is it B something? My Atlanta people, help me out. What's the soul food place in Atlanta? And the food is your... Yeah, the nephew is good. The nephew is good. I can't say too much about it because there's an open investigation. Chicago do. They, the food in Chicago is very slept on. Busy bees, right? Maybe the food is too trendy. Yeah, busy bees. That's very good in Atlanta. Busy bees. That's very good in Atlanta. So what are 
some of the good spots in Atlanta now. They got a spot called the Breakfast Club. That's a, you know, it's a breakfast restaurant and that was kind of popping. What else is popping in Atlanta right now? What else is pop? What restaurants are popping in Atlanta? Oh yeah, I'm gonna talk about that. The sister getting um, killed in downtown LA. <laughs> so you're not a fan of Waffle House? I love Waffle House. I absolutely love Waffle House. They're dumping mosquitoes on Crenshaw. I've been telling people out here in L.A., man, they're dumping mosquitoes all over the place. I've been telling people they're dumping mosquitoes everywhere out here. Yeah, these mosquitoes are, are very unusual. Shout out to our brother 19 Keys. 19 Keys is in the building. Everybody give a shout out to our brother 19 Keys. Brother 19 Keys is in the building. Man, toast on Linux, that's a good spot. So yeah, let me know all the good spots in Atlanta now. Mosquitoes, yeah, man, they, um, they're admitting, the CDC has admitted that they're putting mosquitoes in certain neighborhoods. Their excuse is that they're using the mosquitoes to thwart off other insects or something like that. So they, they're getting these genetically modified mosquitoes and nigga, these mosquitoes are huge and they leave big whelps on your body. So yes, they're putting mosquitoes out here, for real, for real. I am gonna come up with another cologne. A lot of people, if y'all remember, some of y'all, how many of y'all remember the cologne I had out? I had a cologne out years ago, a limited edition cologne that was fire. A lot of y'all weren't around during the Mac Lessons days, but about a decade ago, over a decade ago, I had a cologne line that was limited edition. It was a very exclusive uh, French cologne. I had a company out in France make it, and I made limited edition, and, and for real, limited. When I say limited, it's going to be limited, and you had to get up on it. It was some real fly cologne, and people loved them. All right. Is that risque elite, but I am going to come out with another one soon. But that deodorant, man, you know, the um, um, root work deodorant, that's killing the game right now. People, we, we keep selling out of that. We just got restocked back up. We got some new scents coming out in December. But yeah, you guys can go to um, rootworkstyle.com. Yes, I had a cologne out. It was popping. Yeah, a lot of people go back and listen to the um, Mac lessons. I should try Sexy Red's new lip gloss line. Does Sexy Red have a lip gloss? Yes, they said 500,000 people showed up to taste the soul. That was popping. That was all right. Oh, okay. I thought that was 19 keys. It must be a fake 19 keys. All right. Must be some. It's probably somebody. Oh, I thought it was our brother 19 Keys. It must have been somebody with a fake account. All right. Yeah, it must have been somebody. I hate when people do that. They be getting fake accounts. There's a bunch of people got fake accounts with uh, my ass on it. All right, let's get Soheem. Let's get Soheem wanted to get on. Soheem, hop. So, you have a new show for me? Yes, sir, I do. I was thinking we could do a movie. Get on. Hop on, Soheem. Night series. Oh, like a like a Whoa. What's up, brother? Man, what's up, Flex? I'm good, man. How you living, fam? Man, I've been living good, man. It's been so much stuff I've been wanting to talk to you about. Like a lot of stuff. I I, I probably I know you be making people land their planes quick, so I don't really even know where I want to start at. But I, how, how much time I got? Let me ask you that first. How much time well, I got? Just let's, let's see what you can do in two minutes. Let's get it in. <laughs> two minutes. I right. um, okay. We can talk about the uh, the Keith Lee thing since that's what's uh current. Yeah. Uh, I feel like um, the biggest issue is with that is, you know, I know you are a big, big uh proponent of black owned, you know, uh, shopping black, you know, eating at black restaurants, stuff like that. But yeah. the issue in Atlanta is it's getting to the point where it gets so bougie just to sit down and have a meal 
it's almost like you got to show it's like in a minute you gotta they gonna be checking for wristbands just to sit down and eat some food you know yeah <laughs> you know yeah. what i'm saying it's, it's, it's that, gotten real hollywood vip it's like man i just want to sit down and eat have a meal i just want to enjoy my family like even dude on the video like he went in he like i sent i sent my family in to eat to kick it to chill and they like oh well oh uh, we we don't serve or we don't do takeout on the weekends uh it's like all these weird ass rules it's like bro can we just sit out and have a meal mm. you know what i'm saying it's, it's it's just gotten really really weird so it's it's you know they're prioritizing the bougie miss over actual service and it's just you know that's the biggest issue down here now you know it's like if oh in order to eat a meal you gotta buy a hundred dollar hookah and, you know you gotta <laughs> Lord, <laughs> you know, it's Lord. just it, they they just really missed the game up. So I just wanted you wanted to know what is your thoughts on how can we continue to be confident in eating at black restaurants and spending our money at black restaurants when they're treating us like this, when it's so many politics just to sit out and have a meal. Right. That's a great, great question. I'm gonna get you off and I'm gonna talk about that now. But thank you so much, brother. So yeah, that, my man made a good point. Atlanta, it, it, Atlanta does try to do the bougie thing, and and I love Atlanta, but you know, and 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 let me be very fair. A lot of the folks who try to do the bougie thing, a lot of them ain't from Atlanta. The people from Georgia, their vibe is a little different. So Atlanta, you got a lot of people who came later, so you know their energy is a little different. So, you know, people go to Atlanta and then try to get brand new. A lot of people try to front and floss and. Um, you know, you go down to Atlanta and, you know, strippers be giving you their business cards like, um, um, yes, you can come see my performance at Magic City. You know, it was, it was that type of thing. <laughs> it, you dig? The the strippers act like they're celebrities down there sometimes. Yeah. yeah I, I, I have an appearance at the Blue Flame. At the Blue Flame. Um, come see my appearance. I can get you VIP tickets. It's, okay. All right. I'm not done. Come see your butt cheeks, man. I don't, you know. But I, I get that. Sometimes people try to take the black Hollywood thing a little too far and um, try to be a little extra with it. All right. So, I, I, again, that does kind of kill the vibe. I, I get that. I get that. Because some now you go down to the Lenox Mall, everybody's they, they are trying to act like they're on a runway out there. You know, people are trying to uh, floss and cap and high side and all that stuff so yeah it's it's a different energy it's a different energy definitely you know we, uh, i have a residency at magic city i I'll, I'll be performing at magic city for the next few months um call my people and let's see if we can book you a vip area all right you know that type of shit yeah. <laughs> You know, you meet people in Atlanta. Yes, I have a lead role in a new Tyler Perry movie. You know, okay, all right, brother. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Kind of that energy. But, um, you know, I still I still rock with Atlanta. You know, I, I got to go down there. I got to do, um, um, I haven't done a lecture in a while. I've been doing so many film projects and so many other projects. You know, I got to get down. If I do, because I've been wanting to get back on the road because a lot of people have been wanting me to do the live events. And if I do, the first place I'm going to go is Atlanta. The first place I'm going to go is Atlanta to do a live event. And let's say Blue Flame is the new Alvin Ailey. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all over the place. It is all over the place. I never come to... I love Chicago, man. I absolutely love Chicago. Chicago is my spot. I love Chicago. You come to Detroit. I was supposed to come to Detroit this week, but my, my relative is still in surgery, and they're not letting other family members go to the hospital. They're only letting a few family members, in, you know, because um, it's tight surveillance up there where he is, so. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm wait and see what goes on with that. But um, so I said Dwight Howard, 
Well, is there, there's a rumor now, and I, I know they, they're talking about Gabrielle Union and um, Dwayne Wade about to break up. Where, where did that rumor start? I've been seeing that on some of the rumor blogs, but I haven't seen any kind of reputable uh, media outlets say anything about that. I haven't seen nothing from no reputable outlets. It sounds like it might be some clickbait stuff. When am I coming to North Carolina? Um, you know, I, I want to go to South Carolina, to be honest, because um, I've been wanting the family to go out there. Me and the family, we like to go on little trips within the United States because there's a lot of fly spots in the U.S., man. We forget, man. We, you know, a lot of times we like to travel out of the country, and that's cool, but there's a lot of spots right here domestically that folks need to go to. Um, we, we like the little national parks. We go to a lot of them out here, here in California. Real fly stuff. We um, just went down to New Orleans. Um, my lady and my mother loved it down there. We had a great time, and my lady wants to go back. Um, just being around the family, the FBA family out there, it's a very good vibe. And just the food is off the chain, and I want to go to South Carolina because people, that's another place people sleep on the food out there in South Carolina. I do not know why people sleep on South Carolina food, and I've always said, no cap, I think that South Carolina food is neck and neck on New Orleans food. Straight up and down, man. That South Carolina food is neck and neck with New Orleans food. Yeah. People, I don't know, y'all be sleeping on South Carolina. That South Carolina food ain't nothing to play with, man. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I want to go down to South Carolina and just take the family and just kind of sh go to the plantations. And um, it's very important to pay homage. You know, sometimes being on those plantations, you know, it creates an emotional thing. You know, when I took my mother and my lady to the um, plantations down in New Orleans or Louisiana, you know, the, the, that energy was kind of getting to them. That energy is real. That energy is very real. And it was, you know, it was hitting them. You know, I've been to these plantations several times, so I get, you know, the, the the energy gives me strength. I get some of the rebellious energy from the plantations. Yeah. But I want to go to South Carolina. I want to hit up some of those plantations and enjoy the food and go to the Gullah Islands and all of that stuff. I want to see all of that and just be around all of that stuff. See, the, the low country feels like New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah, man. Charleston, I'm telling y'all, Charleston, South Carolina, that food, is that Teslin? Is that Miss Teslin in here? But I'm telling y'all, that South Carolina food ain't no joke. Yeah, I saw half of Silver Dollar Road. We're looking at the, we're going to finish the rest of it probably later this week. Oh, that's a heavy piece, man, how the black people had all that land out there in North Carolina and the white supremacists were finessing them off their land. It ain't. Yeah, that's a heavy piece. And let me tell you another place with good ass food that people sleep on, Savannah, Georgia. You know, it's right up there by South Carolina. But man, we were filming um one of these. I was filming some movie. I forgot which movie I was filming out there. But um we went out there to film and man, that food was off the chain. That food was off the chain in um Savannah, Georgia. On it's popping. It was popping out there. It's snowing in Chicago. Man. You live in Savannah, Vagabond? It's Savannah is nice, man. And real good people. Yeah, Savannah's a beautiful place, man. And real solid people there too. You know. Gotta stop there driving from Florida, South North Carolina. Um, the African American Museum in Charleston. I have not gone there. I have I'm not going there, but I do want to go there. Yeah, oh man, our food out here is horrible. Yeah, that's why I love. That's why I love going back. You know, to the the FBA locations, <laughs> to the original FBA locations. Yeah, our food out here, man, you got to travel far and wide for good meals out here, dude. Our food in LA is trash. You dig? We got some good spots, but they're so far in between. You know, you got a couple of good spots downtown. You got a, um, 
yeah, I didn't everything around Crenshaw. I didn't had. Yeah, you did. I didn't had all of that, and um, those are drying up. Some of my spots around because you know our museum is in South Central LA, so right down the street from the museum, they got Mel's Fish Shack, which is that's one of my favorites, and that's like you know when I'm at the museum, I used to eat that every damn day. They have um, Grill Fresh, that's over there, like it used to be, well, it's over there by the former Marathon store right down the street, and Grill Fresh, I, you know, we ate them to death. In fact, we had Grill Fresh, it's Black-owned, I'm talking some Black-owned businesses out here. They um, they do like us, well, how can I describe their food? Grill Fresh, in my LA people, y'all know what I'm talking about, it's right on Slauson. They spell fresh. They spell fresh. F A, no F R A I C H E. They spell fresh real strange. But the food is good. It's like a soul food Asian fusion type of thing. But it's real good. And we had them cater um, one of the movies we did. Yeah, Harold and Bell's. They're right down the street from the museum. They're right on Jefferson. We're on Jefferson. Harold and Bell's is like a few blocks down. That's very good. Harold and Bells is like walking distance from the Hidden History Museum. Yes, Fixin's downtown LA, very, very good. It's always packed. Um, Dee's Barbecue, that's in the hood, hood. Um, is Dee's Barbecue on, because I know how to get, is it Western? Dee's Barbecue is on Western, right? My LA people? What's up, Cynthia? Yeah, Dee's Barbecue is on Western, I think. What's up, Gooch? Shout out to the homie, the Gooch. Gooch the Great. What's up, player? So th there are good spots in LA. Now, let's, that's what I'm saying. They're just so, you gotta, they're all spread out. You know what I'm saying? They're far in between. Yeah, there are good spots. I'm not saying we don't have good spots. We have good spots, but they're far in between. Yeah, you dig? Um, you know, Roscoe's, we didn't, you know, you wear some of these places out. We didn't wore Roscoe's out. Yeah. Yeah, Fixins, that's Kevin Johnson's spot. Yeah. What am I coming back to the Bay? I don't know. I do want to go back to the Bay because I enjoy myself out there in the Bay. I really enjoy myself in the Bay. Yeah, Stevie's Creole, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. What spots would I recommend in LA? Eating spots? Um, fixing soul food is good. Um, do they have M&M's anymore, guys? Do, do they have any M&M's locations? I know um, Uncle Andre's out in the Valley. Um, what's the one on, on um, my man got two locations. What the hell is my a man's spot name. Um, what's this, the soul food spot? He got one on Inglewood, on uh, Manchester, and he got one on Crenshaw. Where are my LA people? Why, why am I drawing the blank? And his food is very good. Um, God damn it. Help me out, family. Eminem's Clove. That's what I thought. I didn't know if they had, because, you know, they had a whole bunch of different locations. Dulons, yep. Dulons. Dulons. Yes. Dulons is busting. And there's the one on Manchester. There's always a line. But Dulons. Dulons is the spot. You got one on Manchester and another one on Crenshaw. Yeah, Dulons is off the chain. Um also another one on Crenshaw, the um um why am I drawing a bank blank all these names? Right in Lamert Park. What's the it's a soul food spot, but they're saying that's the Mexicans own it now. It's a soul food spot and they say the Mexican cats own it now. But the food is still good. They're using the black recipes. What's that spot on um in Lamert Park, guys? Like literally across the street from Lamert Park. Is it um what's the name of the place? Houston and Dallas. Now, where are my LA people, man? Y'all know the name of that place. It's right across from Lamar Park. It is right, uh, right across the street. Blood Souls is good too. Yes, Blood Souls is good. Not Bertha's. No, 
Blood Souls is good. Oh, no. What's that spot? It's right across the street from Delicious Ride. There you go. Delicious soul food. Hold on. We got somebody in here trying to. Hold on. Delicious soul food. Hold on. Hold on. Quarter Corday Slay Hop On. Corday Slay Hop On, brother. All right. What's up? Turn the light on. <laughs> You go turn the camera around. What's up, bro? There you What's go. up, bro? Uh, nigga, <laughs> I know you were talking about my fade. This nigga tried to make. I was just joking, bro. I didn't think you was gonna see this. Yeah, nigga, I saw your ass over there looking like a wish at Billy Ocean, nigga. I, I had to do it, bro. I had no. to, bro. Nigga. I know you're my brother, but I love you, bro. I've been following oh, you since man. back in the Oakland man. days, bro. I knew you was going to see it, but I didn't yeah. think you were. Nigga. I know how you like the Joan, bro. Yes, I, I do. Want I know you ain't talking to looking, like looking like a diabetic Nelson Mandela over that motherfucker. I know, nigga. All right, get out yeah. of here. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga wasn't trying to crash. <laughs> Lord, I know he wasn't trying to say shit. That nigga looked like a baby Morgan Freeman. I know you weren't trying to say nothing, nigga. Hell no. Not you, dude. Man, that nigga looked like, like a former member of the Force MDs. <laughs> <laughs> I know this nigga dressed up as a mechanic for Halloween. <laughs> How the hell are you gonna try to snap? And nigga, your apartment. Nigga, your apartment looked like a crime scene, nigga. <laughs> nigga, your apartment looked like the crime scene at Dwight Howard's bedroom, nigga. Like some some booty snatching was going on in there. Booty snatching and drug use. All right. I know he wasn't trying to say shit. Oh, okay. Let me get some ladies in here. Let's get some women in here. Women, where you at? Let's talk to the ladies. And by the way, while we're talking, family, listen, 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 listen. Let me show y'all something. Look, we're on the um, Kickstarter, let me show y'all, man, because this is very important. This is very, very important, family. We got three days. Look, look at this. Let me show y'all the Kickstarter right here. Y'all see this, family? Hold on, let me flip this camera. All right, this is the Kickstarter. You see that? We're at 135. We got to get to 180. All right. We only got three days. And right here on the bottom, the fine print, it says this is all or nothing. This project will only be funded if it reaches its goal. So, family, this is critical. We got to get to 180K in order to make this film pop off. This is a very important film. We only got three days, family. Can we do it? Family, can we get that popping in three days? Is it? Yeah, I, I think this film is very important, family, because it's us trying to preserve our culture. Because people keep trying to erase our culture. We can do that, right? Can, can we do it, family? Can we get that in three days? How many people we got in here now? We got 500 people in here now. We got five. Hundred people in here now. Mm -hmm. How much is that per person? We need what 50, 54K, something like that. No, we need 40, about 45K. We need 45K. All right. We need 45K family. And we got a lot of people in here. Yeah. And I think we can make it happen, family. I really think we can. If everybody go to the Microphone Check website, microphonecheck.com, hit that link, or just go to go to your browser, go to microphonecheck.com, and everybody put a little something on it. Ladies and gentlemen, that would be great. Yeah. If everybody in here, 500 folks, put shit. Everybody put a bill on it. You know, that'll get us right where we need to be. You yeah. 
Everybody go, everybody in here now. You already donated, that's good. Shout out to the folks who donated. All the people who already contributed, let's see your hand. Let's see a black fist. And if you contributed, let's hit it one more time to get it popping and get us where we need to be because it's very important. We only got three days and stuff like this is important because man, they're trying to erase our culture, family. We cannot let folks just blatantly keep erasing our culture. Every time we create something, every time we, we build something, folks come along and then they just straight up gank it from us. And then we're sitting here being told that we don't have a culture. We got to really start gatekeeping our culture. It's very important that we start letting folks know what you're indulging is is something that we created. And we got to stop being ashamed to let folks know about the things that we create. Do they? You say, what about the movie presents the erasing of the culture? Us setting a, uh, a historic record. That's very important. When you set a historic record, then that solidifies the culture. We've never done that with hip hop. We've never really set the historic record about hip hop. We let other people write the history, history and the narrative. Even in the movie, Microphone Check, we talk about how they did that with rock and roll. With rock and roll, they did that with um, Ike Turner. Ike Turner was one of the first people to make a rock and roll record. That's why it was very important to demonize Ike Turner. I want y'all to think about that for a minute. Why did they make Love, what's, what's Love Got to Do With It, which was a good movie. It was a good, because I love Angela Bassett and I love Larry Fishburne. But understand how Hollywood thinks. They don't do things just to do it. There's always, they think like chess players. They think 20 moves ahead. There was a reason why they randomly did a movie about Ike Turner being the world's biggest abuser. You know? There was a reason why they did that. They put that narrative out there so that that diminishes his historic contribution as being one of the forefathers of modern rock and roll. So while they're diminishing that image of Ike Turner, you know? Yeah, yeah, even Tina said he wasn't that bad. Yeah, in the movie, they really did it up. In the movie, they really did it up. Even Tina said, oh, that's a little bit too far, but they really did it up in the movie. So putting out that narrative of Ike Turner, so when you start talking about rock and roll, you don't want to mention Ike Turner. So you'll mention Bill Haley, and they, they call Bill Haley in the, the comments of the Rockets, whatever his band was, they start talking about he's the damn father of rock and roll. You did? When you diminish the, the, the black progenitor, and then you elevate these other guys. You know, that's by design. That's a chess move they like to play. You dig? By demonizing the character of our progenitors of culture. You know? So it's important for us to tell the narrative. You know? I know it, it, it should have been at 180, dude. It should have been there. As in important as this project is because I'm, as we see these people are throwing money to elevate other people into our culture and erase us you know, man, we shouldn't have been at that 180 you know this, this is nothing yeah we should have really been at that man we and when when it comes to projects like this that have very historic relevance and it's very important that we get the stories out there and let our children know. And, you know, this will resonate generationally. We got to be on it, man. We got to start getting this stuff knocked out, knocked out quickly. You know what I mean? We got to get this stuff knocked out. And, uh, um, you know, I, I just said, did any, don't, um, any celebrities don't, I don't know. You know. On Kickstarter, people can, you know, I don't know who's who. People donate anonymously if they want to and they can put their names down. So I haven't looked at the names, but um, you know, we, we don't have to do it depend on celebrities, man. We gotta understand that. See, this is that's another problem that a lot of black folks get into when it's time for something to be taken care of within black society. The first thing we do, where are the celebrities at? Where did the see that we gotta get off that? That's what I'm saying. We gotta get off that. Let's wait on the celebrities. Man, we can get 
get stuff done on the grassroots. It doesn't take a celebrity, man. It just takes everybody getting on code. That's why I like doing projects like this, because this helps everybody get on code. This shows the power of codification, and it gets everybody in the right mindset. When a celebrity or two gets a project going, that doesn't do anything but codification. You understand? That doesn't do anything, because then that just kind of weakens us and makes us say, okay, we just got to keep depending on an Oprah. Um, let's holler at Michael Jordan. We, we can't do that because a lot of the people who are so-called celebrities work for the, the white corporate structure and they've been compromised to a certain degree. And that's a good or a bad thing. When I say compromise, that doesn't mean that they're bad people. Compromise means sometimes they know they can't, they can't say certain things or back certain certain things because they have corporate handlers and they know they got to walk on eggshells. So I'm not beating them up about that. I get it. Some, some of them have to walk on eggshells if they're trying to get that, that corporate money, which is understandable. Us on the grassroots, see, that's why grassroots codification is very important because they can't control you guys. They can't control the grassroots. That's the one thing they can't really control the grassroots masses, people who are just under the radar or just people not out there in the limelight, they can't control that. And that's the problem with them. They, they don't never want us to get on code. They never want us to get on code. I'm not excluding them. I mean, I'm not excluding them. If they want to put something on it, that's fine. But I want us to get into the mindset of we can get this stuff knocked out if we want to. For example, when when they want to give money to a cow written house, they don't depend on the celebrities. They go through the rank and file white supremacists to, to fund those guys. And they get a whole bunch of funding immediately because you got a bunch of people on the code with them. They're on code with them. You know? You got to understand that. So the codification aspect of this is very, very important. The codification is very important because now this shows and that when we show that we did this on a grassroots level, that resonates better and it gives the projects more energy it gives it a better energy when it comes from the soil yeah. when it comes from the soil yeah man yeah when the grassroots gets involved that gets everybody on it it forces everybody to get on it you see i'm telling y'all the power is you the power is the grassroots, man. Let me tell you something. When they tried to go at Kyrie Irving, when they tried to go at Kyrie Irving, the reason why they couldn't get him out of there was because of the grassroots. The grassroots supported Kyrie Irving. The grassroots was saying, nah, 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 that brother didn't do anything wrong. Y'all not going to attack that brother. No, no, no. Y'all not going to attack that brother. That's not going to work. We're as a community, we're riding with him. You're not going to demonize him. You're not going to put a false label on him. We're riding with him. You dig? And that's why they had to back up off of him. You did because that was going to look bad. You had people showing up to the these games. Remember? Don't forget, there were people from the streets and protesters showing up to these games. Like, hey man, y'all not going to do our brother fucked up. That's not going to happen. If y'all think y'all going to demonize this brother, hey, man, things can go real left if you, you want to play games out here. You dig? So, yeah, you're not going to come in our brother sideways. You dig? So, yeah, they backed up off of them. The grassroots is very important. They listen to the grassroots. You guys set the tone. Let's stop that celebrity stuff. You set the tone. And when you set the tone, then the celebrities are come through. You dig? I want y'all to understand the Hidden Color series, we created a global phenomenon with the Hidden Color series. The Hidden Color series changed the way history is taught as we know it. Um, the Hidden Colors films are taught in universities and schools all over the world. That literally changed the way history is taught. It created the whole woke movement. That's why there's a backlash to that woke movement. They got the war on woke now because everybody got so woke meaning that we started learning real history and real knowledge they start saying hey we got to stop this we got to start taking books out of schools yeah down in florida they, they just said hey let's take the gloves off these niggas are too woke so now we're going to take this book out of school that book out of school so yeah they're not even they don't even have no bones about it 
you know? And remember, when we did the Hidden Colors series, when we first started getting the crowdfunding for that, only 200 people contributed to that. It was 200 people, 200 of you guys on the grassroots. 200 people helped create a global phenomenon. Only 200 people. And, and everybody, when it popped off, everybody got on board. Everybody. And it, it became a global phenomenon. The celebrities started getting on board with it. Um, you start seeing celebrities hold up their Hidden Colors DVDs. Uh, Waka Plaka had a few copies. Um, Colin Kaepernick was on it. Um, yeah, Nipsey was a huge fan of the Hidden Colors series. He would play the videos in his car and do business deals and would put that on his story. The artist Prince. Um, had several Hidden Colors DVDs at Paisley Park. Um, everybody was on it, man. Yep, everybody. Tiger, everybody was on it. You know? Everybody supported it. It literally changed the game. They got, the, the celebrities got on point because you guys were on point. They got on point after you. You guys are the secret sauce. I want y'all to understand the grassroots. We've always been the secret sauce, man. The power is you. you know? The power is you, family. The corporate structures, they study you. J. Cole, yep, he was on it. Absolutely. Yeah, Prince carried my DVDs and travel bags. Yeah, he told Janelle Monet that um, he made Janelle Monet watch it. She tweeted that. J Janelle Monet said Prince made her watch it. And he says, she said that Prince makes any white person around him, Prince makes them watch. He, when he was alive, R.I.P. to Prince, he made them watch the Hidden Colors DVDs. And at Paisley Park, after our brother died, you know, there was some video of people. Somebody took some video of his house. And he had the Hidden Colors DVDs all over his house, over in Paisley Park. Yeah, everybody saw, yeah, that thing was all over. You know, they were bootlegging it like crazy. But yeah, the Hidden hidden Color series changed the game. That absolutely changed the game. Yeah, that literally started the Conscious Walk movement globally. And that came from the grassroots. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, so, yo, it's definitely a lot more. It's I know it's a lot more. Because a lot of them hit me up. A lot of people, they hit me up all the time saying, hey, man, me and my family, we watched the movie and we... Man, it just changed our lives. You know? I, you know what? Somebody said, did I know it would impact the world like that? Dude, I knew it would be big. I didn't know it was going to be a damn global phenomenon. I might literally, people in, <laughs> in China watching it, and Korea, and villages in Africa. I saw some cats in a village in Africa. I, in Africa, they're watching it. They're like in a little village. And, Somebody had plugged up a DVD player and they're watching it all in Africa, all over the place, literally all over the place, you know, to the point it, it got so damn big and it, some people started looking at it as being dangerous. That's why they banned me from the UK. It got so damn big and the UK audience really, really loved it. And we kept having big screenings over there and they were like, you know what? Enough is enough. Nigga, you can't bring your ass over here no more. And you and your movie can't come over. Remember, when they banned me from the UK, I was on, we were on our way to go there to do a screening. We were on our way to go to um, um, the UK to do a big screening. It was a big sold-out screening of Hidden Colors 5. And they were like, nigga, you can't come here and your movie can't come here either. They were like, if you get your, if you land anywhere near the UK, we're going to detain your ass. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, okay. Okay, this is, you know. Then it started getting a little scary. So yeah, they banned me from the UK and, and then they banned the movie. But when they found out that they banned the movie, the, my brothers and sisters in the UK were ready to turn up. Yeah, they, nigga, and they banned me and the excuse they gave, it was a real vague excuse. They were like, well, my presence isn't conducive 
to the good of the society there. That was their official excuse why they banned me. Yeah, I'm a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, that's, that's not. But yeah, they said um, it just my presence wasn't conducive to the good of society there. Basically, um, I was waking too many people up over there because when, the, when I did a lecture there, I did a lecture at a concert hall and sold it out over there. You know, we're selling out venues over there. Every time I go there, we did a, I did a lecture over there. They were treating me like Lionel Richie. I had people chasing my car out there. Tyreek, I want to talk to you. Oh my God, this is different. I had people chasing my vehicle out there. Yeah, so I got a lot of love in the UK. Plus, <laughs> I would get a lot of media press over there. So yeah, they let me get on, on TV out there and just say what I needed to say. So they were like, wait a minute, this nigga could be dangerous. They were like, no. no. Now this nigga can come over here and just say something and get everybody riled up and then he bounced and got all of these riled up niggas over here. So that that was kind of their thing. They thought, okay, this Negro, this American Negro, who's not controlled by a corporate entity, he's not a part of a group or anything like that. So they can't attack a group or anything. They can't attack an organization. They can't get no hand handlers to reel me in because I don't have any handlers. So they're like, well, this nigga can come over here and say anything. He got all of these people listening to him, all these black people. And some of these black people are disgruntled with the um, powers that be. So we don't want this Negro to come over here and say anything to get them round up. So they're like, you know, fuck it. You just can't come over because we say so. <laughs> And then they tried to ban Hidden Colors 5 after a lot of people were planning on seeing the, the premiere. There was a big premiere out there for Hidden Colors 5, so they banned me. And then they tried to tell the people, well, yep, well, Tariq is banned and we're going to ban the movie, so we're not going to show the movie here at the theater. And the people there started calling that theater, threatening them. <laughs> and they ended up having to show the movie. They got threatened. The people were like, oh, there's going to be a movie. Um, they told people that the movie screening was canceled. And they were like, oh, no, it's, no, it's not. They were like, no, no, that's not correct. It's not canceled. We're still coming. And then, and then the movie theater, they called, they emailing me, oh, God, we're, we're fearful. I'm like, don't. Don't say shit to me. First of all, y'all banned me from this, the, the country, and I'm not even the promoter. So what the, don't email me shit. I'm not the promoter. I'm not the promoter. It was a brother. Um, I forgot what my brother's name is, but it was a promoter who hooked up the screening. So I, shit, y'all said I couldn't come. I'm bidding. I ain't in it. The fuck y'all emailing me about you scared? Because y'all done told the people over there that ain't no screening, and them folks that plan to come out there. Folks that bought tickets, folks that bought people were eager to see the movie. Then they were like, well, we ain't going to show it. People are like, oh, oh, hey, really? Oh. You know, they're, they're very gangster in the UK. They're very polite, but they're very gangster. You never know. You don't sleep on their gangster. Just because a motherfucker sound like Peppa Pig don't mean he ain't about the business. So we had Brother Kaba go after over there. Brother Kaba went over there. We had to have bro Dr. Kaba literally had to smuggle the movie in the UK. Um, there was, I, I had a copy because we had to keep the copies real close knit because we didn't want any bootleggers. So it was only a few of us who had copies over here. I had a copy and it just so happens another guy in New York did a screening of the movie and he had a copy. So we had to, the big screening over there, we're trying to figure out how to get the movie over there to the UK. And it was me and Brother Kaba who was scheduled to do a lecture over there. So we luckily, right before Kaba got on his flight, because I'm banned, but we, me and my lady ended up going to New York, but it, we wouldn't get there in time. So I had the promoter meet with Dr. Kaba right before he hit the flight. So Dr. Kaba was able to get the movie over there in the UK. I mean, we were doing some... Mission Impossible stuff to get the movie over there. It, 
we're doing some Mission Impossible. So Dr. Cobb literally smuggled the movie in the UK and the theater was forced to show the movie. It was, it was a movie theater there. There was a big venue theater and they were forced to show the movie because they were going to try to cancel it and the people were calling, threatening the theater. <laughs> and the people were showing up. And let me tell you something, them niggas in the UK, their knife game is on point. <laughs> The, them brothers, the knife game is different. Yeah. So, so the brothers were showing up with knives sharpened. They're like, oh, we're gonna show, we're gonna be. There's gonna be a movie somewhere. Oh, it's gonna be, be a movie somewhere. Yeah. It's gonna either be a documentary or a horror movie, but it's gonna be a movie. Yeah. We gonna get some kind of entertainment up in this bitch tonight. Yeah. Man. Yeah. They weren't going for that cancel shit. They were already pissed that they banned me. They were real pissed because of that. They were already pissed. They were like, oh, really? Oh, so we need to go ahead and let y'all see well, how we feel about that. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they, they scared the theater into showing the movie. <laughs> yeah. Trying to get a written Washington. No, I didn't hear about that in written Washington. Yeah. Down in Florida, man, there was a sister a few weeks ago who they found hanging in a tree. They found a sister out there in Orlando hanging in a tree. The media ain't really said nothing about that. The media has not said nothing about that. Y'all look that up. It was a black woman in Orlando, Florida. They found her hanging in a damn tree out there in Ron DeSantis's Florida. Yeah. Um what's um what's academics saying? You know, Val, what did what did academics say about um the Saucy Santana thing? What did academics say? What did academics say? Because yeah that Saucy Santana academics thing, boy, that went left. Man. Oh yeah, shout out to uh, thank you, John. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, man. They, they, yeah, man. Look, Google that. They said it was a suicide stop, and they always say that. And yeah, folks generally don't go out and publicly hang themselves as a form of suicide. You know, people usually don't do that. You do, know? man. When does the No Jumper interview? I don't know. Because there's a couple of No Jumper interviews that I did. They haven't aired them yet. I don't know. It, I, sometimes it takes a minute for them to um, air them. Yeah, I saw that with um, Kaya was dissing Sexy Red. That was cold. Kaya was hidden under the belt. So you were in Orlando. You just heard about it last week. Yeah, I, that, that whole thing about suicide. They lie about it. Uh, suicides all the time. They say we killed our, kill ourselves, and that's all cap. Remember, there was a black judge in New York. His, his sister was in her 60s, possibly 70s. And they sat here. They found her in the damn Hudson River somewhere. They found her in a river. And they, they tried to say that that was a suicide. They said that this black female judge, who was like in her 60s or 70s, committed it's suicide by jumping in the Hudson River some shit. I said, that ain't nothing but cap. The last thing an old black woman is going to do is kill herself. Old black women, especially old successful black women, she ain't about to kill herself. And later on, they found out when they did an autopsy, there was no water in her lungs. And then they got real quiet about it. You know why that's significant? There was no water in her lungs, meaning that she didn't drown. Meaning she didn't drown. Meaning that she got killed before her body was dumped in the river. That's why there was no water in her lungs. Then they got quiet and didn't say nothing else about it. Because it sounds like law enforcement or somebody was involved. And I think that woman, that judge was involved in prosecuting, I think some kind of ruling where she ruled against some cops or something like that. It was a ruling against some cops that she was involved in that was controversial. So a lot of people were saying it might have been some funny business with um, the police. Yeah, she was first African-American judge in her position. 
What was that sister's name, guys? Y'all help me out. This was some years ago. This is about five years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they didn't find 